Hello and welcome back. Sean here, Mountains Garage, on a rainy Monday in the middle of April. We're having some April showers today. I swear you can watch the grass turning green. I'm looking out the window right now. Flowers are popping out. Beautiful end of last week and weekend with high 70 degree temperatures. Just beautiful. So a little rain today. It's okay. That's what April's all about. So today's video is inspired by lots of things, previous experience, and things I still see up until this morning I was watching a video and watching the what I call the ATF waterfall take over. People who handle transmissions seem surprised when the oil leaks out. <laughs> it is unfortunate that most automatic transmissions were never equipped with a drain plug in the pan from the factory. Some were, most weren't. So the first step, if you want to save yourself a lot of hassle, is just drop the pan. And when you drop the pan, if you've never done it before, decide which end you want to drop down first and work your way around, leaving one or two bolts in the back and break the pan loose and it'll start flowing if you just took all the bolts off and the gasket's stuck and you knock the pan loose, you're gonna get a bath. So you want the pan to tilt down into your drain bucket as you slowly take the last bolt out and let it drain. So, And it's a good thing because the health of your transmission, the secrets lie in the bottom of the pan. There's no way to hide what's going on in there because gravity is gonna bring all the junk down to the bottom of the pan. So it gets half of the oil out. And the new guy, despite, you know, you can only do so much, especially when people are new. Maybe the night before, he just pulled, he or she just pulled the transmission out, had it sitting on the jack under or next to the vehicle, and they dropped the pan. They didn't plug all the holes. Well, overnight, the torque converter is still full. It's going to drain back, and it's going to find its way out mysteriously through every open hole. So <laughs> that's just the way it goes. Uh, as early, well, as late as maybe a month and a half ago, a uh, guy was bringing a transmission to my shop. Somebody else had put it in his truck for him. It was facing, the tailgate was here, that's facing forward. Still full of oil. That's the way they pulled it out. Nothing, no spare yoke stuck in the transmission, nothing in the dipstick hole. When the wind in the back of the truck goes over that open hole and out past this, it will suck all the fluid out of it which it did, into the bed of his truck, his brand new, less than a year old diesel Ford. I know they don't give those away, right? And uh, it was dripping down through the drain holes up near the cab onto the particulate filter on the exhaust. And he was pretty sure his truck was gonna catch fire. And I still have a giant puddle in my driveway that I've cleaned up and I'm putting dirt on it and scrubbing it, but I'm still not too happy about it. And it doesn't have to happen. I was watching a video just this weekend where people that know better were removing the drivetrain out of a project truck they were starting on. And what do you think happens when you just pull the drive shaft out and you, you cut everything, they were totally hacking the entire job, which is always slows you down, but that's, a, that's another video. What do you think happens when this baby's full of oil and you start to pull the motor out and it has to go like that to clear the firewall? Yep. There's no way that they didn't spend hours cleaning up afterwards. The entire bay was red. <laughs> I don't get it. Get yourself an old yoke or take the yoke off the drive shaft you have. Get a plastic plug. Put one of these gloves and a wire tie around the yoke and the output shaft. <laughs> and you can prevent yourself from having that much hassle. Now, the smaller holes... Now, I bought this transmission just like this. It was already stripped, and somebody removed it, and they stuffed paper towel in the cooler lines. That's better than nothing. That's more than most people do. But what's easier than that, if you take old cooler lines or even some new fittings, the 5 16 steel tube uh, flare nuts, inverted flare nuts, fill a couple of them full of silicone, or at least the bottom one, let them harden up, RTV, and then just thread them in the hole. Or 
You can buy metal ones, inverted flare nuts, plugs. These are made just for plugging holes. Voila, that's not gonna leak. If you have AM lines, for about 10 cents, you can buy these cool little metal caps. There's plastic stuff available for free. You just gotta plug the hole, but you want it to be trustworthy. You want it to be tight. The other end of the cool line, the female end, they make these cool little rubber stoppers that spin. I actually have this set. I never bought a pair. A Ford van came in that had been to the radiator shop in Arizona. I'm in Maine. And they replaced the radiator and they put these on the cool lines. And, hey, the guy was doing a good job. He plugged the cool lines out you know, by the radiator and never reconnected them. <laughs> these held from Arizona to Maine and never leaked enough. Eventually the transmission developed trouble. It was a Ford C6, obviously. Well, not obviously, but it was a Ford C6. But, so these clearly, with the rubber stopper, are definitely liquid tight. The dipstick hole, which is a common problem for leaking anyway, you can just hack up an old dipstick and drive it down into the hole. Again, I fill it full of ITV. I crimp the end, roll the end so it's not sharp. You put it in a vise, squeeze it together after you cut it off about yay long. Fill it full of silicone, ITV, let it harden, and you got yourself a forever plug. You can have multiple styles or whatever, you know, but one that goes in the top hat, I call it, or one that takes an O-ring. You could get extravagant and have them all because if you're handling this junk all the time, over the years, you can just have a little box full of plugs. A buddy of mine sent me some, I, I should go get them and show you, but I've showed them to you before. The, I call them pacifiers, but that's exactly what they look like. A little round slug of metal with a, a loop on it so you can get your finger in it, and it goes right in the hole with the top hat seal. So we'll pop your dipstick out, drive that in. That's not going anywhere. When I go in search of cores, I try to bring a few with me. I have quite a few core transmissions sitting around, you know, out in my shed and here and there. And it's a battle. The most efficient way, as soon as I get them, if I have my metal drain plug, the plastic one doesn't hold up very well, but I will tip it up, tail housing down into the drain pan and try to get most of the fluid out of it and get rid of the torque converter because that's just adding weight. And then when it spends its life sitting around, it's not constantly oozing but they will still surprise you. <laughs> when you want to move it with a two-wheeled hand dolly or a hand cat or whatever you want to call it, a hand truck, you do not want to load from this side because as soon as you tip it up, you know what's going to happen. This side, unless the speedometer hole's open, you're good to go, but it will eventually run out of the tail housing if you, you know, go over some angled terrain. I have spots outside to prove it. <laughs> a reoccurring scenario in my life is when people bring a transmission, despite asking them to drain it, it has not been drained. Uh, clean, cleaned would be nice, but that never happens until this weekend. A friend of mine was going to drop off four Turbo 400 cores. He pressure washed them and then pulled the pan off to make sure there was no extra liquid in there. I believe he covered the pump or left the torque converter in it, so I'm hoping no water got in there, but they're here and inside, so at least they won't freeze. And uh, I'll have to make a, I just thought about the pump portion of it, but I hope he left the torque converter in it or did something to prevent water from getting in the pump, because I hate to think there's four pumps that are gonna get rusty, because pumps are hard to come by. Anyway, but it was above and beyond. They're actually clean and you can see what you're working with and it's gonna be a joy, at least the rest of it, Instead of, you know, scraping dirt. This one here is actually for transmission. Again, I just picked it up. It was all stripped. All the pots are in the box. It's pretty well empty inside and still sitting here dripping on my bench. You know, you'd think it would be empty by now, but I need to build it in a week or so. So I dragged it over and it was the inspiration for this video. That and the oil spot in the driveway. That's it for today. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope you had a great Monday. Catch you soon.